you would think after a year I would know how to record myself. Um, so we're going to talk about liquids tonight. And two quick notes I needed to talk about. One is next Tuesday we're doing our class presentations. So I moved that back because of the nice weather. But it's going to rain this weekend, so it'll be a great time. Uh, you need two scientific studies that you are going to talk about and write about. Um, you are also doing a paper. So the paper is should be four, I think I said four to eight pages. Eight pages doesn't make it better, but it needs to be four solid pages, not three pages in one sentence. So don't, don't do that to me. Um, but you need to have two scientific studies that you talk about. And Rocky's going to join us. Um, if you're having trouble finding them, send me an email. And or if you find something different you want to switch to, uh, just send me an email, and and we can do that. So I have on Blackboard that your papers are due Sunday. Um, they're due by Tuesday. But if I put Tuesday, you all procrastinate. I'm hoping that some of you will get them in Sunday. Um, the presentations are Tuesday. So I will be asking you, not right now, I'll do it when I'm off. Uh, I'm going to split us into two groups. So some of us can be six to eight. This is Tuesday. I have no idea what the date is next Tuesday, probably 27th, 28th, something like that. Um, I have something from five to six. So the other group can be two to four in the afternoon. So I'll be asking you which group you want to be in. It always works out. Um, and then also there's two of you who haven't given me a topic. So I'm hoping when we take a break in a bit that um, you'll be able to tell me a topic or that you're sending me an email now. And the other thing was I did not realize that the lab was going to show up this weekend on like the nicest, beautiful weekend. Uh, so in the lab, there was an extra credit opportunity, and it gave you like four or five different documentaries um, that you could watch for extra credit. You can still do that and turn it in. Um, so it's going to be a rainy weekend, and so you can pick one of those. That was in the protein lab. You know what I mean? It was underneath. And then if you wanted to make a healthy change, um, you, you can start, uh, we got more than 30 days. There's going to be other extra credit opportunities that are going to show up. Um, yeah, so I, I wanted to put that out there because the weather was amazing and none of you turned, did the lab until Sunday, like after the sun went down and I don't blame you. Um, so yeah, extra credit points always help. All right. Um, so there's no lab due this weekend because you're supposed to be writing your paper and turning your paper in Sunday would be a great idea because that would give me a chance to read it on a rainy Sunday or on Monday. And if I am not happy about something, I'll, I'll put a comment. I'll send you an email and say, hey, you should, the study's really good, but this is not really a study, or you need to have more information about this or that. So Major did that like last term with one of his papers. He sent it to me early. So you can actually submit it because it's going to let you submit again. So if you do submit by Sunday or like by Monday noon, I, I will look at it and give you feedback um, of things that you might want to add and stuff. But for the presentation, you guys know what you're doing. So you do need to talk about the studies and the presentation. I don't want where you talk about it and none of us can understand or I'm the only one who can remember your audience. So make it that we can understand, be relatable. Um, all right, so liquids. I think that was it for now. Um, yeah, and you can wear a NOF to celebrate liquids and IMFs. So why you should care is they determine the state of matter. The stronger ones are going to be liquids or solids. And the London tend to be gases. Now, there is an exception to this. So the London are things that are nonpolar. Um, and since we don't technically have a book, some of you might read that.
free book that's there. They are often actually now called induced dipole, induced dipole, because again, it's always between two atoms or two molecules. Um, so some students will call them the ID. I just call them London because that's how I was taught them. Again, they can be called dispersion forces or van der Waal, but they're a momentary that um, if you had something like argon, so you have two atoms in the center, you have a positive. And if the electrons for a moment, they kind of warp the other one and have an attraction to the nucleus of the other atom, it's very momentary. Very, very momentary. It's really an illusion, uh, but it's there. And as you increase the surface area, so this is back to the comment that Major <laughs> said. Um, as you increase the surface area. I don't think any of my camera was on. <laughs> you're okay. You know what? It doesn't record you, so I'm the only one who can see you. I, oh, I, I he was know. he was huge. I was like, oh my god, the mafia is coming to take you to take you away. You did something. Um, so increase surface area. I, you know, I really wish I was live again because and not videotaping because when you videotape, there's things that you can't. I can't tell some stories and stuff. But all right, increasing the surface area uh, increases the strength. That is true only for London because there's no pool. You look at surface area. There is a point where the surface area can become so large that it becomes higher than these other ones. So if you get like 20 carbons, you're going to end up up here higher, higher attraction than, um, well, definitely higher than the H bond. So if they get large enough, and again, this is why geckos can walk up the wall. And H bond, again, is really an extreme dipole. And it gets the special category because H2O, it's 70, over 70% 70 of us, over 70% of the planet, water's important. It is all about fluidity um, in life, in everything you do. Is there any questions about that? Um, oh, and there was, there was somebody asked a really good question, I think Christian, during office hours. Uh, and it was why ionic is stronger than the dipole or H bond. Ionic, you have a true positive and a true negative. You fully transferred. So there's a full transfer of the electron. Whereas with these, there is an area of positivity. So that's why we show that. So there's a pull um, and negativity. Uh, and so there is an attraction, there's a pooling, but it's not the full transfer, so it's not as strong. So it's back to that question on the study set, the magnesium oxide had a higher attraction because it had a higher charge. These have a much higher attraction than these because these are a full charge and these are just a pool, so a distribution. Hopefully that helps a little bit. All right. So. Let's see if you got it. What's the key about gases that make them special? Anybody can answer. How about the key for liquids? Flow. Yeah, so these are fluid. I mean, it's why we call them fluids. They flow. They have strong IMF. This is why we do IMFs with liquids. Every book, when they teach IMF, it's with liquids. Gases have weak IMFs because they have giggles and jiggles because they're chaos. They have giggles and jiggles and wiggles. That, that comes back. Giggles and wiggles. All right. Uh, and then solid is a regular pattern. So when I used to talk about this when we were live in class, yeah, you, you guys all, because your cameras are off, you guys are all like gases. You're giggling and jiggling and wiggling. Not not really giggling, but you're all over the place. Um, but when we were in class and you had to be there and you were sitting there, you were all like solids. 
you're just sitting there. I was like a liquid because I would be moving around. I'm now like the solid. Uh, and then when the, the bell rang, we all got dismissed. We were like asses. We dispersed. Um, and so, yeah, well, next week we spend the whole week on gases. And, and that's good news. Gases have laws. So one time in chemistry, we get to do laws, which means the math is there and the math is true. And so it's, it's all algebra-based math. So it's, it's really easy math um, if you like algebra. Um, so that's the good news for people like Max and myself who like the math and numbers. On, on Thursday, we might start a little bit today, depending how, how long I go on. Um, we're gonna be doing geometry which is good. We're going to, it's, it's triangles and cubes. It's simple geometry. All right. Um, and, and these also have IMFs. That's what's holding them together. Um, and again, with gas, there's um, empty space, lots of empty space. So that's why you walk through the air. We all walk through the air and we don't fill it except when the wind's blowing. Walking on the air would be a little bit harder because there's all the empty space. Supposedly you could do it. So walking through a wall would be pretty hard because they're, they're together because of the strong IMFs. All right, uh, hydrophobia. Which ones are gonna suffer from hydrophobia? Somebody new on the board? Maybe? I got Michael up there, so I'm happy for today. Maybe next one. The gap. The nonpolar. <laughs> oh, yeah, the ones that are nonpolar. I see your linearity there. The ones that are nonpolar tend to, are going to tend to be gases. So, yes. Uh, things that are nonpolar don't like water. So, so the question somebody asked me also in office hours, and this has to do with the worksheet today. So solubility, what dissolves what? Um, so polar likes polar. That's the cartoon on there. We keep coming back to this. So polar likes polar, which is water. And nonpolar likes nonpolar. Um, so that's, they don't mix with each other. And that's the whole thing with the cartoon. Um, I'm going to write, they do not mix unless, that's why we have chocolate. You know, nobody picked chocolate as their topic. That's the molecule of the gods. It was even named the molecule of the gods. So if you don't like your topic, all right. Um, unless you have an emulsifier. So chocolate is sugar and fat. It's sugar is very, so sugar loves is polar. Sugar dissolves in water and fat is nonpolar. And without the two, you don't have chocolate, but the two don't mix. And so you need an emulsifier. Uh, and so an emulsifier is something that is, I don't know if I taught you guys this word, but it's good. You used to learn it. Uh, Amplifier. I think it's like that is how they spell it now. I never actually saw this word until six months ago. Um, but it is something, amphi means both. And this is, I think they were trying, I don't know if they misspelled it. Uh, and they're supposed to say amphiphilic. We can say amphiphilic. Uh, this means love. And this means all. They love everything. So they are both polar and nonpolar. An example would be, well, in our cell member, I just did this with my other class. They have a test right today. Um, soap would be an example. So soap is an emulsifier. Uh, it's why soap works so well. So soap has these ionic end and that ionic end is polar. And so it loves, loves water. Ions love water. And then it, it has, all this zigzag, these are carbons. 
which are hydrophobic. So it has both on one molecule, a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic part, and so it can emulsify. Um, in case of chocolate and most things, salad dressings, if you start reading labels, almost everything has lecithin in it. So lecithin is made by our liver. Uh, it's a phospho. This would be a phosphate group. And then there's two fatty acids on it. And it's made by our liver because cholesterol is actually really important for our body. We just get too much in our diet. Uh, and so you have to have a way to carry cholesterol is all hydrophobic. And we have to have a way to carry it around our body. Uh, and lecithin does that. And so lecithin actually means yolk. So it's found in egg yolks. So those of you who bake, it's the reason you add egg yolks when you bake, when you make bread, because it holds it together. Uh, flax does it too. I don't fully know why, but it works really well. Anyway, so that's, that's that. Let's see, we can do another cooking lab. My other class gets to. You guys get to do a couple of kitchen chemistry ones this term, which is good. And a couple extra credits that are kitchen chemistry. All right, um, so liquid properties, I don't know why you should care. It's like gorgeous out there. Um, you know why vapor pressure? Because maybe you're gonna go climb Mount Everest someday and this will be really important. Um, vapor pressure and boiling point go together. We have to define vapor pressure because it is actually part of the definition of boiling point. Um, so vapor pressure, the word vapor means uh, when a liquid becomes the gas above a liquid. So gases are something that's already there in the gas state. A vapor is something that becomes a gas because it's evaporating from the liquid. Does that make sense? Really, they're the same thing, but it's just a fine tuning pressure we're going to talk about in a lot of detail next week. Um, pressure is, in one word, collision. In chemistry, it's collisions of uh, the gas molecules above the liquid. So when you have that hot coffee that um, Major can demonstrate for us, and so the steam's coming off, if he covered it, the, the steam would be colliding with itself and we could measure the pressure. Um, so that's what it is. So as you increase temperature, you're gonna always increase vapor pressure because more escapes. That's the word I've been looking for. All right, it must be the NOS. Makes you think better. Um, the big thing that's happening with vapor pressure is the gas has escaped. The big difference between a liquid and a gas is the IMF. So it's the gas that's escaped the IMFs that were holding it into the liquid state. So at a given temperature, and you will usually see this with vapor pressure that a temperature is given because for anything, that's what this is showing that as we increase the temperature, the vapor pressure increases. And I'll talk about this graph in a minute. But if we pick a given temperature, um, as you increase the IMF, you're gonna decrease the vapor pressure because less escapes. So the greater attraction less escapes. All right. So if we compare these, uh, which has the higher vapor pressure? This is an H bond because we see the knot and this is a dipole. So you want to pick the weaker one. It 
That is the key for vapor pressure. So all those charts we did today from weakest to strongest, the weakest would win this for vapor pressure. All right, fluorine and bromine, they're both nonpolar. So this one is larger IMF, larger surface area. So this one's going to have the higher vapor pressure because it's weaker. Write it up here. All right. Um, so do the curve. I've talked about boiling point. Any questions? Boiling point is when the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. Real quick, VP, in this class, we're talking about vapor pressure. We run into this like a couple times this term, so keep politics out of it. We're not going to, I don't even know who the terrible US citizen. All right, um, so this is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. That's what this curve is. So standard boiling point, normal boiling point. Is one ATM or seven sixty tor. So a perfect day like today at sea level, which we're pretty close to sea level here in Gresham. Today we probably were your water is probably gonna boil at a hundred degrees. Anybody ever live in Salt Lake City or make a box of brownies and it tells you this is how you make it unless you live in Denver or Salt Lake City at your 5,000 feet elevation. You have to make it different when you live at a higher elevation. If you go and live in the Andes or in the Himalayas, they cook different. In my house, we cook like we live in the Himalayas. We pretend like we're at 9,000 feet. So we cook with pressure cookers. Um, so they have to use pressure cookers because as you increase elevation, you decrease vapor pressure. And that's why a lot of people get sick because there's not enough pressure. There's because there's not as many oxygen molecules. And so you can't breathe. And so when you get really high into the death zone, right above 8,000 meters, so above like 25,000 feet, they wear oxygen masks. Oh, I was gonna go grab the picture from Nepal. So on the other side of the wall, there's a picture from top of Mount Everest um, from Pimba. So Joey's dad, is a real Sherpa. I'm not a real Sherpa. I married one. I do terrible at elevation. Um, so if you did the aspirin lab with me, that was actually based on my experience. But Pimba really said that to me. At, we were at um, close to 4,500 meters overnight sleeping and I got insomnia. I don't get insomnia. I Above 4,000 meters, I don't sleep. And it's awful. I sleep three hours and that was it. And we were above 4,000 meters for a long time. And, and I got a headache, which I don't get headaches. I had not had a headache in like 10 years. And I'm like, and people are always like, they can't believe this story. They're like, you don't get headaches? I'm like, no. Um, and, and so it's the middle of the night and I'm like, oh my God, I have cerebral edema. I'm gonna die. I have altitude sickness. And so I wake him up and I'm like, I'm gonna die. You have to take me down. And he just goes, take two aspirin and wake me up when you're paralyzed. Like, cause that's the next step as your body paralyzes. Cause he's actually carried people down from the mountain who were at that state. And I'm like sitting there going, that's so not compassionate. I, I didn't end up paralyzed. Um, I could not open the bottle of aspirin though. I couldn't actually find it. And then, but we made it the next day. Um, all right. So, these 760, this line here is showing the normal boiling point. What this, these lines are, this is the boiling point for each one of these. So it is not a straight relationship. As you increase the elevation, decrease the vapor pressure, you decrease the boiling point. So what happens when you get to higher elevations, so 
on Mount Everest, the very top of Mount Everest. This is Mount Everest. If you come over to water, there's actually, if you read like Sir Edmund Hillary's chronicles from there, this is another really cool story that happened to me right after your guys' final. It may have been the day of your final it happened. Um, but Sir Edmund Hillary left a fund uh, and brings a Sherpa every year, like one of the top Sherpas, to study in New Zealand. Uh, and it's actually a relative of Pimba's. But, so I got to help, help sponsor her to go on the Sir Edmund Hillary um, scholarship. All right. Uh, so water is going to actually boil at like 65 degrees Celsius on top of Mount Everest. So Tenzin Norgay, who's the Sherpa guide for Sir Edmund Hillary, he was out there boiling the water. Sir Edmund was a white male and was like in the tent, passed out. And so the Sherpa, superhuman um, from a different planet, he's there trying to boil the water. The water boils really easily, boils at 65. You can't cook an egg because it's not high enough temperature to denature the protein. So you don't get enough giggles and jiggles. You can make tea. But the tea is 65 degrees. It's like, I want hot tea. You can't cook ramen noodles on top of Mount Everest. So they use pressure cookers. So with the lid that cranks on there. And so it increases it. Uh, 400, I think this is the top of Mount Rainier. So if we went on a class expedition, we, we actually do that. We could probably go climb Mount Rainier all together, but we're not allowed to be in lab together. Uh, our water would be like boiling around 82 degrees. So we could cook an egg, but um, the water cooks, heats faster, but it doesn't get to as high a temperature. Um, I think Mount Hood is probably like around 600, maybe 550. So, um, all right. That was a quick side note on that. Uh, so... These are going to, as you increase the IMF, you are going to increase the boiling point. So as you increase the attraction, you need, uh, you need a higher temperature. You need more giggles. So temperature is how much kinetic energy. So you have to give it more jiggles so you can overcome, so you can shake it apart. So we need a higher temperature. So in this case, it's going to be the HF has the higher boiling point and the bromine has the higher boiling point. So this is always our key. I should find a highlighter. Um, all right, we're going to do some math on the next one. Oh, actually, let's go back up to this curve because you're going to have, I think you might have two of these. Uh, you definitely have at least one on your study set. So looking at these, this has, oh, this guy, ethylene glycol is way down here. But as you move this way, you're getting a higher boiling point, which means you have stronger IMFs. So the water has stronger IMF than the ethyl alcohol. Because ethyl alcohol is those carbons, and those carbons mess up with the attractive forces, which is higher than the diethyl ether. You will also see questions on your study set where it will say, like, let's, let's do one. So if you were at 600 tor and 60 degrees Celsius, I'm just randomly picking a point. So we find 660, so we're right here, my star. Right? You guys know how to find coordinates on a graph? So the question is, what is the state of matter of the ethyl alcohol? Well, go ahead. I was going to say water. It is a liquid. I thought you were going to say solid. I'm like, that's not even a choice uh, right now. Um, huh. This, he is correct. It is going from a liquid to a gas. That's what this line represents. So the ethyl alcohol is a liquid. So what is the ether? The ether is this line. 
at that same point. Well, the ether is going to be a gas because the ether has already crossed to become a gas. So this line is between the liquid and the gas. Um, let's move on. All right, the next one, delta H VAP. So remember, delta H means enthalpy. Enthalpy is a measurement of heat. We talked about this last term. If you remember the difference between heat and temperature, that's great. Um, you can always Google it. But this is a measurement of heat, the amount of heat. to change the liquid into a gas. This is the temperature, which is a measurement of kinetic energy. They are both related. This is looking at it from the heat standpoint. Same relationship, stronger IMF, you need more heat, higher heat of vaporization. So you need more kinetic energy. It's looking at the same thing from two different sides. So we're going to do some math um, with this curve. And then we only have one more page. Um, this, These are the numbers for water. You're going to have these on your study set. I think there's two of them. And you're going to draw these curves. They always look like this. They call them a curve. They don't curve. This is a sloping line. There is a flat line, and then there's another flat line. These flat lines are at the melting point. And this one is at the boiling point. So since this is water, it's at 100 degrees and 0 degrees. Whatever I give you, the flat lines, this, so the melting point is where the solid is turning into a liquid. You have both states of matter are present. Down here, this is time or it's heat, that you're adding heat. And so as you're adding heat, you can actually, you guys have all done this experiment. You can have a glass of water and you put ice cubes in it or lemonade or iced tea, and you put ice cubes in and you have both the liquid and the solid present. Eventually the solid starts melting. And so we're in this place, as long as they are both present, you're in this flat line. You've also all boiled water at some time in your life. And so you're up here. This is where both the liquid and gas. Um, so it's the liquid becoming a gas. All right, what's connecting them? These diagonal lines, they have a slope. They are straight lines connecting. That is when, so this is when you are the solid. Number three there is the liquid. Number five is the gas. So you start heating it. Down here you have ice. You heat it until it gets to the melting point. And at its melting point, it is both a solid and liquid. Once it's all melted, that's that point there, you now heat it from zero to 100 degrees. You keep adding heat until you get to the boiling point. And then it is both liquid and gas until it's all boiled, like you walked away and you didn't pay attention to the pot and it all boils off. You've all been there. And if you haven't ruined any pots and pans in your kitchen, you haven't been cooking enough. Um, right, Damon? Damon's a cook. He's like, yep, that's true. It's a sign. You walk into a house and you're like, oh, this aroma. And they're like, you look at the ceiling of the kitchen. I remember this back in grad school and it was a friend of mine from China invited me over and I walked in her kitchen and it was a mess. And there was grease stains on the ceiling. And I'm like, I want to eat here. You walk in and it's like as clean, like it looks like Max's kitchen right now. Like this guy, he orders out all the time. He's using the microwave. Right. So kitchen should be well used. The cookbook should be in five pieces, all that good stuff. Um, so these numbers here go with the lines, perhaps, right? Uh, 
So one, three, and five, which are the slopes. Anybody remember what the C stands for? I think there's only like five of you still listening, but anybody? Starts with specific. Specific heat. Yes. Specific heat. Uh, when we did this last term, we talked about water, which is the liquid. It is actually different for solid, liquid, and gas. So that's why there's different numbers there. So anybody remember what it is for water, for the liquid? 4.0. 4.184. There's no zero. So 4.184. And then that is joules per gram Kelvin or gram degrees Celsius. It's the one that has the funky units. Um, and so that's true for one, three, and five. All right, the other thing I want to point out, and then we'll do the math, is uh, heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. So those numbers are not temperature dependent because you're at a flat line on temperature. These other ones do depend, this, this temperature is the change in temperature. Remember that, delta T? So we're going we're gonna to be using that for in the liquid phase, the gas phase, the solid, that um, Q equals mass times change in temperature times C. Remember that little formula? We'll do it down here where I have more room. Um, so these go with the flat line, and they do depend on the mass or the moles, but not on the temperature because the lines are flat. The other thing, and it is a question I sometimes will ask, why is this number the vaporization? So this is the amount of heat to vaporize it from the liquid to the gas. This is the amount of heat to change it from the liquid to a solid. Why is this one so much higher, the vaporization, than this one? Do, we've already talked about it. it. Has to do with the big difference of gases versus liquids and solids. Empty gases, space. There's empty space because there's chaos. It has to do with this, the IMFs. So you have to overcome the intermolecular forces. So you, that's why this number is, is actually a huge number. For water, it's a really big number because the H bonds are really big. So you're overcoming the intermolecular forces. Up here, you're just disorganizing the pattern. So you need to give it some wiggles, but not as much as to vaporize it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. We have 50 grams. We're starting at 40 degrees and we're changing it to a vapor. So we're gonna mark our graph. So you're gonna always make your graph and you can label it. I usually do this on the board and have more space. Um, but you can actually write these pieces in here. So like this is delta H of VAP. So when I say to label it, that's what I will mean on the homework, delta H of fusion. And here you can write solid liquid gas or C solid, C liquid, C gas. Um, and then this is again, the melting point and the boiling point. I wanna remind you, this is water. So it's zero to a hundred. When you do it in the study set, it's going to give you different numbers. So you're going to have to shift this graph uh, wherever you want. So if we're starting at 40 degrees. We're somewhere here. We're starting as a liquid. And we're going to go to the point where it's all vaporized. So this is going to be step one. Step two is the delta H of that. So we're only going to do two steps. Sometimes you have to do three. Sometimes you have to do four. Sometimes you have to do all five. So if we started down here at negative 10 and went up to 110, we would have to do five steps. You're going to add the steps together. And you're going to label the steps, what each step means. So we're starting at the liquid. And when you're at solid, liquid, or gas, I'll write it down here, solid, liquid, or gas. We're doing that formula of Q equals mass change in temperature times the specific heat. Sorry. So that's going to be our first step as the liquid. We're going to, we're solving for Q. We're solving for heat, how much heat. 
Remember, Q is heat. So that equals the mass times the change in temperature times C. You can also just do a factor label. So the mass is 50 grams. The change in temperature is not 40. What is the change in temperature? Final temperature minus initial temperature. Yeah, so 100 degrees to 40 in this case. So this is going to be the 60 degrees Celsius. So it's how much it changes within that state of matter. So again, if we had started at negative 10, this would be a 10 degree change. We go all the way through this, which is 100. So you have to figure out how much the change is within that state of matter. Uh, and then C is the specific heat, 4.184 joules. Where did we get that initial temperature from? It was right here. It was given in the question. How did we get to 60? Because as the liquid, it has to get to 100 degrees because that's the boiling point. Yeah, so 100 degrees minus the 40. Is that what you're asking? So it's a change to get to that next flat line. Yeah, so thank you for that question. Um, so we can punch that in. Oh, we're going to want to go to kilojoules. So 1,000 joules to one kilojoule. You want to keep these in kilojoules. All right, so 12.6, uh, 366, because that's what I gave you. All right, and then for heat of vaporization, that's going to be this part here. So that's going to be step four. So we just take the number 40.6 kilojoules per mole. It's in kilojoules, that's good. We just have to deal with the mole. So this is H2O, and in this one is H2O. On the on the study set, I know one of them silver, so you'll use your periodic table. H2O is like 18.016 grams per mole, and then we want to get rid of the grams, so the 50 grams over nothing. You pick a heart, you draw a water molecule, and we punch that one in. Any questions? Wait, why did we use that 18.016? We had to get rid of the mole. So it would be, this is the molar mass of water. This is for H2O. Okay. All right, so I got for this one, like 112, 113. So, or if you, if you do it all in one step, I do them often in one big setup, 112.7. We add the two together. That's where I got. So 125, 126 kilojoules, show units. Again, this one had only two steps. Um, I don't know on your study set where it will be, but you want to figure out where you are on the curve. A quick comment. I Here, because I'm teaching it, usually I have the big board and I'm showing a big picture. Um, on your study set, you, you may not have to draw the full graph. You might just have to do what we did, which is this part. So this is as the liquid, this is the heat of vaporization. This is a, back to um, like Major's question. That was 100 degrees and this is 40 degrees. And this is where it's vapor. So you can do a partial graph. You would just want to label what your two parts are. All right, any questions? So, surface tension. Anybody know what it is? It's not actually why Jesus could walk on water. You can do this too though for extra credit. 
So he was a quantum master. He, he understood quantum mechanics. That's why he could walk on water. Um, it is why bubbles are always spheres. So you can get those, you can do whatever you want. You can get those bubble wands that are diamonds or whatever. I had bubbles, right? No matter what, they come out as circles. Bubbles are great this time of year. Um, it has to do with surface tension. So it's exactly what it says. A quick comment, this is not surface area. So surface area is how big the molecule was. This is the tension or attraction of the surface molecules. So a liquid is going to be made up, right? A tablespoon of water, one tablespoon of water is Avogadro's number of water molecules. So we're cooking a whole pot of water. There's like Godzilla zillions of, did anybody get to see Godzilla versus Kong? It's playing at the Mount Hood Theater. Joey and I almost went. We have a thing about Godzilla movies because they're so fun. Um, so you have your water or whatever your liquid is. And it is, you can draw your molecules however you like. It's the attraction they have for each other, for other molecules. So you get this tension that is building they have fill this with orange the attraction. All right. Um, so as you increase the IMF, you're going to increase the attraction. My pen's running out. You're going to increase the surface tension. So water, because of those H bonds, um, so those water bugs that walk on water. They do it because they have their their surface area is really spread out. They have really somebody said if we had like arms and legs that were 12 feet long, we could do this. No problem um, with balancing our centers. All right. So stronger IMF, stronger attraction. All right. The next two just um, they both have bees. The viscosity. Anybody know what it is? Um, Does it have to do with its movement? Like, I think if someone yeah, actually like, has to that do, there, there is this technical, like if you Google it, it's it says it's resistance to flow. Right? So it's inability to move is really what it is. Um, so an easier way, my, my brain has to simplify that, it's stickiness. So viscosity is how sticky it is. So think of honey like real honey, not high fructose corn syrup honey. So real honey or maple syrup. You know, Aunt Jemima doesn't have any maple syrup in it. It's like high fructose corn syrup, fructose. Um, we'll ignore Kaylee for now. Maybe she'll figure out I'm still in class. Um, yeah, honey's not the best example because it's a mixture. And that is something I did not mention yet. Solid liquid gas are assuming you have a pure substance, that you're dealing with only one type of molecule. We get into mixtures in week, whenever Tristan leaves. Um, and so that's when we do mixtures. And that's when we start mixing things together. And so we'll deal with aqueous. Um, all right. So honey is actually an aqueous solution that's made up of so many amazing stuff. You should, honey, you could live on honey. Um, totally different effects. So high fructose corn syrup is where we've totally changed corn. And then um, you get both glucose and fructose, and then they just make it a little bit higher in fructose, and then they add it to everything. And because it's been isolated and modified, the vibrations are totally wrong. And you take it in. And it goes to your liver and your liver is like, what the heck is this? And people are like, oh, it's fructose. Our body knows what to do with fructose. It doesn't. It stores it immediately as fat. So if you take it in as this highly modified, it's, it's like the same molecule, but it's been man modified. Like we've 
just by isolating everything out of it. If you're getting it in fruit or honey, your body uses it as energy. It doesn't store it. So kind of interesting how that happens. All right. So as you increase your IMFs, you're going to increase the stickiness. Um, so increase, it's going to be more viscous. Viscosity. So it's more sticky. It's resisting flowing. Another way I talk about it, it's, it's like you see something you're attracted to, you don't move as fast. You kind of slow down. You want to talk to people. And we used to talk to people. All right, volatility is the exact opposite. Volatility is not anger. It's actually a chemistry term. It's ease of evaporation. So these two are really the exact opposite how easily it evaporates. So if you cross the border into Washington or California and you have to pump your own gas and, or if you drive a motorcycle, right? And you get some as you're filling up the motorcycle, you always want to wipe it off. But often by the time the guy comes back with the towel for you to wipe off, it's already evaporated. Um, it depends. Some of them are really good at getting it to you. Um, so how fast it evaporates. So this one, as you increase the IMFs, it, it's going to um, not evaporate. It cannot escape, right? So it cannot escape the liquid. Uh, and so you're going to have a lower volatility. So the very first one I talked about vapor pressure and the very last one are the only two those two are looking at how easily you can escape and so those two have an inverse relationship all the others stronger attraction higher surface tension higher viscosity higher boiling point um all right so we're gonna this is how you're gonna see the questions so it takes what we did tonight and it takes it the next step so you look at the imfs you see the NH, and they all say in uniform, unison, uniform, H bond. This one, the P is probably pulling. So there is a pull, it's polar, so it's a dipole. So you want to figure out your type of IMF. This one's stronger, so this is our higher IMF. And then it's going to ask you about one of the properties. So higher surface tension is the higher IMF. So that's going to be the CH3 NH. You know what? These should say NH2. Can you guys fix my typo? Because that's going to drive me. And this should say pH2. Otherwise, I, it's a different question. Uh, vapor pressure is going to be the weakest IMF. And so this is going to be the other one. So again, vapor pressure is how much escapes. So you want a weak one is going to escape. All right, on the next one, they're both nonpolar. How do we know that from just looking? We don't even have to think too much. Should just be automatic. Hopefully it's getting to be automatic. What do I see? That tells me it's nonpolar. I see the C's. Go ahead, David. C and H are nonpolar. Carbon, hydrogen only. There's no pooling. They are, they're content. They're a nonpolar bond. Um, so the stronger one is surface area, not surface tension. So greater surface area, this one, because it has 10 versus 6. So you just look at size, greater surface area or size. This one has the higher IMF. So you want to always go through figuring out which one's stronger and then the more volatile is the weaker. So the C6H12, again, vapor pressure and volatility, how much escapes. Uh, viscosity was, there's going to be some that ask you to tell me what it is in your own words. Use your own definitions. Um, so this will be the C10H12, H22. 
questions? Um, all right, bring a calculator. Don't leave yet. I'm going to stop recording if there's no questions. I am going to ask you guys, though, 